Hello, welcome to PC Games N. This is Dave. And Jacob. And today we're unboxing the brand new NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti and 2080 graphics cards. Okay, well let's just dive into it, shall we? Come on, hurry up, hurry up. This is like kids at Christmas. All right, okay. But with knives. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is, let's say this is the new box from NVIDIA and it's, yeah. it's DHL label, that's really well, nice. Strange word, yeah. So this, this is where I have that terrible fear that there's nothing in here and just like a three inch statue of Jensen Huang going nah, nah, nah. But actually, what we have in here. <laughs> All right, okay, you pick one up. There we are. Okay. Da, da, da. All right. RTX 2080 Ti. I can't open mine. It needs to be better at this, Jacob. I Come on. Open mine. It's like you know, okay. being defeated by a tiny little bit of plastic. Oh. Get your card out. 2080. Mm. Shiny stuff. Okay. All right, we'll start with the big boy first. So this is the 2080 Ti. The top one in the stack. So this is the founders edition card. So that's. $1,200 mm, or, or um, about £1,059 in the UK and this launches September 20th. September 20th. So next Thursday. Ah, there she is. Oh. Mm. I mean, there is a certain stove certain top rustled. cooler mm. aesthetic to that, but it's nice. It's nice. That's just a, oh, that's nice and cold to the touch. I apologise for the sound of that. So you're going to have it again with this one. Sorry, what? I can't hear you. There's, there's a certain rough. Oh, 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 this, oh there's, this, a peel. there's a nice bit. Oh, 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 thank you. Just had a little moment. Oh, there's a lot of peeling to do. This is great. Oh. So there she is. RTX 2080 Ti. The brand new top of the line GTX Tur RTX Turing graphics card. Eat. All right, hand me the knife. Let's get into the 2080. Oh god, we've got a little package here. Oh, we're gonna do the whole thing. Down. Okay, calm down. We've got this little box here, and this is gonna have very little of interest in there. But it's a, it's a DVI display port. port. Quite handy. Quite handy. For all the people buying your RTX 2080 Ti and people love display port using your, and yeah, DVI. Your DVI yeah. Don't 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 you get don't you get faced with me. All right, okay. Well, all right, all right. Now you can get into your box. All right, box. hand me the knife. I'm just going to sit here and stroke this for a little bit. That's good. Safety first. Oh, there it is. Oh, this one came with a label on it. What's your label say? Nothing. Nothing of interest. <laughs> Nothing of interest. Don't worry about the label. Ignore the label. Get out of here. Okay. <laughs> The RTX 2080, which this version is $799, yes. $799. It's founders um, edition pricing. Founders edition pricing, slightly factory overclocked. Um, but the basic version will be $699. Or I say basic, the reference edition, which we haven't seen many people hitting that price yet. So yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see about see, that. We'll see how that comes out. So Sorry do, for the do, noise. Do the loud, do the loud thing. Oh, that's, that's not nice. Oh. Get out of here. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. <coughs> I quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine didn't even have them on this either. I oh. get nothing. Oh. I get nothing. You had a label. But we have a 2080, so I suppose I'm happy with that. Shiny. Mm. And also the same. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing what's going to be in there. Oh my god! DVI to display. It's DVI. Oh my display. god! Oh my god! It's, it's it's take center stage. stage. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And there they are. Okay, so let's talk specs then. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that I'm definitely not reading this off a spec sheet because there's a lot to get through here. Because um, I've totally memorised this. Totally mm. got this. It's all down. It's all down. So. 68 of the new Turing SMs in here, and there's 65 CUDA, 64 CUDA cores in each SM, so that makes a grand total of 4,352 CUDA cores in this little beast right here. That's, 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 that's a lot of CUDA cores. That is a ton of CUDA cores. That's a lot of CUDA cores. So, um, and 
But not only that, we've also got tense cores and RT cores in here as well. So there's the AI um, inferencing deep learning cores, as well as the ray tracing specific silicon designed for the RTX stuff for Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5 when they come out. And when Microsoft decides to update Windows and allows us to actually use it. Hooray! Mm, yeah. So yeah, we can't, can't actually do any ray tracing for a while. Which is a shame. Um, but yeah, so these are the Founders Edition cards. So this is uh, a slightly overclocked um, version of the RTX 2080 Ti. So the reference card is starting at uh, 1350 megahertz and boosts up to uh, 1545. But this overclocked version is about 90 megahertz higher. So that um, starts out at the same, same place, but goes up to 1635 megahertz. Which might make some difference. We don't know yet, because mm. we're, we're not allowed to talk about benchmark performance. <laughs> and we even, haven't even had drivers yet either, so who knows? Hey. But it's also an absolutely humongous GPU inside of this. We're talking like 754 millimeters squared. That's like, that's like about that, I think. Yeah, I think about we're a bit off there, but yeah. okay. it's that's pretty big. 18.6 billion, I'm reading this off a spreadsheet, obviously, I can't remember. 18.6 billion transistors in this little graphics card here. So when you compare that to the 1080 Ti with 12 billion, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty hefty jump mm. in scale. Yeah, and die size from Pascal as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, not only have we got a brand new GPU in here, we've got brand new memory as well. So we've got um, 11 gigabytes of GDDR6. Um, for reference, we're probably going to keep calling that G6 because it's a lot easier to do than GDDDRDRDRDR6 because that's a lot of effort. That's running at uh, 14 gigabits per second and on a 352-bit aggregated memory bus. So yeah, lots of spec numbers. Really, we love those. So what's yours got in it? All right, I well, I wish, RTX 2080, so a bit lower spec from the TI, and that means the CUDA count is 2,944 <laughs> for a total of 46 SMs. Lisa. All right, um, so overall that means we got 368 tensor cores for all that AI computation goodness, um, and 46 RT cores for each SM. So that should help with all the ray tracing stuff that you want to be able to do. Um, because this is the Founders Edition, that does mean we get 1,515 megahertz uh, base clock speed, which is actually the same as the reference clock. Um, but then we get the 90 megahertz uh, clock speed bump um, over the reference edition for 1,800 megahertz as uh, boost clock. And of course, with memory, it's quite a bit of a, a cut down. So it's only eight gigabytes of GDDDR6. GDDDDDR6. G6. No, I'm not doing that. Like a G6. Um, which is 256 bit memory bus and will go 14 gigabits per second. Um, and speedy. Yeah, quite speedy. speedy. That's a 225 watt TDP. And Overall, that's a 545 millimeter squared die. See, that's the interesting thing mm. to note here, because we've got, um, so this is the TU-102 GPU inside of this, TU-104 GPU inside of this, so it's two completely separate GPUs. And then we've got the RTX 2070, which is gonna be coming in October, and that's on another completely separate GPU. So mm -hmm. this is the first time, so that's the TU-106 GPU. And they're very, very different as well. It's not just a cut down version of each one. Um, if you actually have a look at the die shot of this one compared to this one, very different specs. Um, and the 2070 is almost exactly a chopped up version of this, like literally in half, um, with, with almost like the SMs cut in half, um, the texture units cut in half. So it's, it's quite it's quite an interesting yeah, fact. Because with Pascal, it was the GP106 was the GTX106 GPU. 1060. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, they completely lost me. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, the and, and the 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 GP one hundred four yeah. for for the ten eighty and ten seventy were essentially the same GPUs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which is, so it's quite a, quite a separate. And this is the first time that Nvidia have launched essentially three completely disparate GPUs mm. um, for their graphics cards at launch. So I mean the the, the twenty seventy. That's only going to be like a month apart. So three completely different GPUs at launch. Pretty impressive stuff. Probably we don't know. We haven't tested them yeah, yet. Not that. Don't get drivers still tomorrow, but hey. <laughs> so yeah, as well as all the gubbins inside, we've also got the different connectors as well. So they're both the same for, for both of the cards. So you've got DisplayPort 1.4a on there, HDMI 2.0, and this little doohickey here, which is USB-C. Yeah, who needs USB-C? It's actually, yeah. it's, a, it's a virtual thing. It's a virtual yeah. thing. Virtual Link is essentially everything you'll need to run a VR headset straight out of your graphics card. Yeah, all done. in one little connector, lightweight. 
And Nvidia say that it can use DisplayPort compression to get up to 8K 60 hertz um, with HDR, which which um, these cards are probably not going to be capable of on their own. Which brings us to uh, the new form of multi GPU technology they've got inside ready. them called NV Link. So they've got these little, oh, there we go. these little, oh, little things on top here. So these are the, just the uh, NV Link connectors. So this is not SLI. Um, but what NVIDIA have done is they've made um, the SLI application function through the NVLink connector. NVLink connector is essentially it's, it's a much higher bandwidth um, connection than uh, PCIe. Uh, so it can run directly from GPU to GPU now. So it doesn't actually have to go across the PCIe bus. And, bus. and it was previously a professional feature that they put on Quadra cards, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it meant that in compute terms, um, the GPUs could just sit together, communicate between each other, and do their compute yeah. shizzle. Share a memory pool is kind of the main. Yeah, super quickly. Um, so that's going to be pushed forward over into the consumer space. So at launch, realistically, NVLink isn't actually going to give you much more than SLI did. But the idea is that this is sort of like a, a line in the sand, and that future games developers will be able to see the NVLink bus see that the GPUs are just talking to each other now, and so we'll be able to do interesting things like potentially one card will be doing part of a frame in, in the pipeline while another card does a separate part of the frame, or it does the post-processing or the pre-processing and splits that between them. So it's potentially a new dawn for multi-GPU. Mm, but only on the high end, because these are the two cards that come with NVLink, 2070 doesn't, and if 2070 doesn't, that means probably anything below that won't yeah. be. Yeah, and they don't even have PCI, uh, they don't even have SLI, SLI either. Yeah. So the only ones you'll be able to do multi GPU with are these two buddies. Which are going to be quite pricey. So I've got the RTX 2080 Ti as the absolute pinnacle of gaming Ooh. performance. This battle between the 1080 Ti of the last gen and the RTX 2080 is where it's really going to heat up. They're both kind of a similar price. Yeah, well, I mean, the GTX 1080 Ti launched at $699. The reference card version of the RTX 2080 is $699. So that's kind of the tiering that, that, that we're mm. seeing shaking up. So the really interesting thing is going to be how well this performs versus this one. Yeah, obviously ray tracing, that's something that only this card's gonna be able to do to a, a, a level which is actually gonna be any good for anyone. Yeah, so um, they're talking about, um, so this is capable of eight billion rays calculated per second, which is pretty damn good. I mean, they're saying that sort of like five to six billion rays per second is kind of like the minimum you want mm. for really good ray tracing. And that's somewhere where the 27 That's around where the 27, so yeah. the 27 is kind of like the entry level point mm. for ray tracing. So 2060, probably not going to happen. Um, but it means, so this 8 billion rays per second, top end of the last generation, the 1080 Ti, could only do 1 billion. Now, that sounds a lot. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. 1 billion rays, hey. But that's not good enough to do proper real-time ray tracing. Yeah. And of course, the RT cores in here, I mean, that's a dedicated silicon doing it separately. So it's also not going to completely wipe out other performance as well, depending yeah. on how, how that's set up in the game. But the point is, mm. Ray tracing and the basically the RTX stuff, the DLSS, which is the, the really interesting sort of like AI powered anti-aliasing system. Mm -hmm. None of that's coming in until October when Windows updates their drivers. So that means the first benchmarks between these two is going to be just rasterized gaming Straight performance. Great standard gaming. Yep, and so that's where it's going to really heat up. Yeah, as, as I said, at the moment we don't have benchmarks for these two cards, but um, in certain interviews, uh, Tom Peterson, the technical marketing director of NVIDIA, has said that he expects the 2080 to beat the 1080 Ti in most games, which kind of implies that it's not going to beat it in all games. Yeah, and so that's maybe not by much. Yeah, depending. exactly. So it could be could be a very interesting thing. I mean, this is going to be sort of like they're saying this is kind of like a starting point for 4K, mm. um, 60 frames per second. Boom. So there's this the the trade off is you can get potentially a cheaper card right now yeah, that will be great pounds. for now, and then a card which you're investing in that maybe a year down the line could be a lot better than that, depending on if like DLSS stuff like that really picks up and a lot of games support it. Yeah. So that's going to be really interesting. So let's have some top trumps. So in terms of, okay, 2080 Ti, how many SMs have you got? I've got 28. 46. Damn. Yeah. Pretty CUDA cores, 
I've got 3,584. You've got 2,944. Win. Yeah, so a bit less than. Okay, so that's interesting. Clock speed. Max is out 1582, 1582 megahertz. 1800. Oh, so quite a bit. But GPU boost is going to obviously take both cards quite a bit higher when you're actually gaming. So. I mean, that's actually another good point, actually, because um, with the RTX cards, it's going to come a new form of overclocking. So we're going to get a one-touch overclocking, which is being introduced with the NV scanner, which is something that NVIDIA engineers have been using to, to test the limits of their graphics cards. And now they're rolling that out into um, the consumer space. So we'll be able to use that. We'll be able to drop our RTX 2080 into the bench, press one button, and then it'll spend a couple of minutes trying to figure out where its voltage frequency curves lie and find the absolute best performance for that GPU. But the interesting thing is that's also going to be rolled out for all GPU Boost 3 and 4 cards, which is every single one of the Pascal cards. So eventually that same optimal performance where it's just going to get the, yeah. the best that the actual silicon can manage will be in the 1080 Ti as well at some point. And hopefully that's actually going to be around launch. Um, NVIDIA has said that they're going to try and get the MV scanner running with the 10 series cards at launch. So when the drivers drop for the RTX cards, um, well, around like the public drivers will be out on the 20th of September when the cards properly launch, it's potential that you might get serious overclocking performance out of your 10 series cards too. So one last thing, because I feel like I'm going to totally win this, die size. What okay. you got? Die size, yeah. 471 millimeters squared? 545 millimeters squared. Turing is a big ass car. So there we go. We've got the RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 2080 out of their boxes and ready to go into our test rigs for proper benchmarking, uh, which we can't do just yet, but we'll have the full results for you next week. So if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe and check back at PCGamesM.com for more from both of these graphics cards, the two of us and everyone back there. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Goodbye. I'm going to just take yeah, this home. It's a minor. Cool. <laughs>